بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد So our Sheikh just finished uh, reciting Surah Al-Baqarah and as we know the ending of Surah Al-Baqarah is a very blessed portion of the Quran. The Quran of course as it is is the most blessed of all speech. Khairu al-kalami kalamullah. The most blessed of all speech is the speech of Allah. But within the speech of Allah certain portions are more blessed than others. And so for example the greatest surah in the Quran is Surah Al-Fatiha and the greatest verse in the Quran is Ayat Al-Kursi and Surah Al-Ikhlas equals one-third of the Quran and so on and so forth. So within the Quran, certain phrases or certain ayat are more powerful than other, even though the whole Quran taken as a whole is more powerful and more blessed than any other speech. And therefore of those blessings and of those extra special verses are the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And there are a number of traditions that are narrated about the blessings of these two verses. Of them is the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever recites these two verses before he goes to sleep, kafatahu, they will be enough for him. They will be sufficient for him. What does it mean they will be sufficient for him? Scholars have differed. What does it exactly mean when the Prophet Sallallahu said it will be sufficient for him? And some scholars said that th this person, if he doesn't pray to Hajjud, inshallah he'll get enough reward to get by. Because the average Sahabi would pray to Hajjud. And so the Prophet said if he reads the last two verses, alhamdulillah, kafata is just sufficient. Other scholars said kafatahu means they will protect him against shaitan. There's going to be a protection against him and between him and the shayateen. Other scholars said it will be enough of a blessing for him to protect him from the fire of hell. And the interpretations go on, but the Prophet left it open. Whoever reads these two verses before he goes to sleep, it will be enough for him. And therefore, it is of the sunnah of the Prophet and it is of the sunnah of those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet that they receive these two verses every single night before they go to sleep. <coughs> of the blessings narrated about this are these two verses is also uh, the hadith reported in Sunan At-Tirmidhi, uh, sorry Sunan An-Nisa'i in which the Prophet ﷺ said that I have been given from underneath the, the, the kans, the, the treasure that is present under the throne of Allah, I have been given these two verses. The hadith says that there is a treasure under the throne of Allah. Kanzum min taht al arsh. Of course, Allah has a throne, and Allah has mentioned this throne in many verses in the Quran. Ar Rahmanu ala al arsh istawa. There is an arsh and there is a kursi. Under this, this is of course ilm al ghayb. We'll never understand what is all of this, but under this there is a treasure, and we know that the the arsh and the kursi are the highest creation. There is nothing higher than that. The Arsh and the Kursi are the highest of the creation. Jannah itself is underneath the Arsh. Jannah to Firdaus, the roof of it is the Arsh of Ar-Rahman. So under the Arsh there is a treasure. There is a kanz. What is in that kanz? We have no idea. All that we know, one thing that we have from there, we have it on this earth. And this is what our Prophet ﷺ said, I have been given from underneath the treasure that is present under the throne of Ar-Rahman, I have been given the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. In a, in a hadith in Musa Imam Ahmad, the Prophet ﷺ said, that when I went up to the journey of Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj, Allah gave me three things. Allah gave me three things. Number one, He commanded me to pray five times a day. Number two, He gave me the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And number three, He promised me that anybody of my ummah who didn't do any major sins, he would be forgiven and go to Jannah. Anybody of my ummah who didn't do any major sins will be forgiven and go to Jannah. The minor sins will be forgiven if you avoid the major sins. So these are the three things that the Prophet was given directly when he went up in the journey of Al-Isra wa miraj And from this, some scholars have said, and this is a theory, Allah knows if it's true or not. Some scholars have said that the entire Quran was revealed through Jibreel to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu except for the last two verses of Baqarah. From this hadith that I just mentioned, that when I went up to Isra wal Miraj, now, when he went up to Isra wal Miraj, what happened? Inshallah, when we get to the Seerah lessons, we'll talk about it in more detail, but there's one phrase in it where the Prophet and Jibreel were going together, and then Jibreel says, I don't have permission to go beyond this, you have to proceed on your own. 
And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى That the Prophet was closer than even two bows length or even closer than that. That the Prophet went to a place where even Jibreel was not allowed to go. He went higher than any created being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him directly from behind the veil as he spoke to Musa on this earth from behind the veil. But our Prophet went up and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him there. Whereas for Musa, Allah spoke to him on Turi Sayna. Point being, no one was an intermediary between Allah and the Prophet when the prayer was legislated. And in the same hadith, the Prophet said, I was given the last two verses of Baqarah. So from this, many of the scholars of tafsir and the scholars of, of the sciences of the Quran, they have said that these two verses were given directly, i.e. Jibreel wasn't an intermediary, and that Allah recited these verses directly, and that the Prophet came down with them directly. And this would of course therefore mean that this has a very special blessing, that these were the only two verses that the Prophet was given directly without the intermediary of Jibreel. Now what is this tafsir of these verses? Very briefly now, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ this is of course, now a lot of people get confused. Lillahi ma fi samaj ma fi al is not the beginning of the last two verses. These are the third, this is the third of the last three, right? Aman al rasulu to the end are the actual last two verses. So don't get confused. Aman al rasul to the end of Baqarah, these are the last two verses. My beloved brothers and sisters, the last two verses of Surah Al Baqarah hold great significance in the Islamic tradition. These verses are often recited for their spiritual and protective benefits. One key benefit is the affirmation of faith they contain. They express the believer's submission to Allah's will and recognition of the core principles of Islam, including belief in Allah, His angels, His books, and His messengers. This serves as a reminder to Muslims to remain steadfast in their faith and to trust Allah's wisdom in all matters whether they understand them fully or not. Another significant benefit of these verses is the mercy and ease and reflect from Allah. In verse 286, Allah assures believers that He does not burden a soul beyond its capacity. These verses, this serves as a source of comfort to Muslims during times of worship, reminding them that Allah is aware of their struggles and will only assign them challenges they can bear. It fosters a sense of inner peace and resilience, encouraging believers to seek Allah's help and remain hopeful no matter the trials they face. Finally, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah are known for their protective qualities. According to hadiths, reciting these verses at night provides divine protection from harm and evil. The verses serve as a form of supplication where believers ask for forgiveness, mercy and guidance from Allah, making them a powerful spiritual tool for both individual and communal well-being. Their recitation is believed to ward off negative influence and ensure peace and security through Allah's protection.